everybody. Get ready for a tough core workout yoga style. It's day 11 of commit, 30 days of yoga. Please like and subscribe and stick around to the end of the video where we break down a pose from today's practice. Let's start kneeling in Thunderbolt pose at the back of your mat. Come forward to table and begin to move through cat-cow flowing with your breath. To a flat back, slide your right leg straight back. Rainbow the leg from one side to the other, off the edge of your mat as wide as you can with control, moving at your own pace. Return to table, slide the left leg back, rainbow the leg. and return to table. Engage the core, extend the right leg and left arm and hold. Draw elbow to knee five times. Four, three, two, and stay extended on one. Face the palm down, lower and lift the foot and hand five times, four, three, two, and stay extended on one. Wrap the left arm back along the side of the body and hold. Lower the hands and leg to table. To the other side, extend the left leg and right arm and hold. Elbow to knee for five, four, three, two, and one. Turn the palm to face down, lower and lift for five, four, three, two, and one. Wrap the arm along the side of the body and hold. Lower to table. Curl the toes under and make your way to down dog. Walk out the heels if you like. or walk to the top of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale to a half lift, flat back. Exhale, fold. 
Inhale to chair pose, arms up and hold. To standing in mountain pose, hands to heart. Adjust here as needed. Shift your weight to the left foot. Raise the right knee and hug it in, knee to chest. Send the right leg back to a warrior three pose, reaching the arms forward. Stay here or reach the left hand down and twist open to the right in half moon pose. Return to warrior three, hands to heart. Then coming to standing, right knee to chest without touching the foot down in between if you can. Release and lower the foot slowly and with control. Shift your weight to the right foot, pick up the leg, Hug it in, knee to chest. To warrior three, try to keep those hips squared off to the mat. Lower the right hand and open up to half moon facing the left side. To warrior three, hands to heart. To standing, knee to chest. Lower the foot slowly and with control. Standing now with your feet hip width apart, bend the knees and lower the hips, hugging the legs. Heels down if you can, otherwise just keep them lifted in a toe stand. Now you can move hands free or touch down for support. Send those knees forward, coming to kneeling. Flatten the tops of the feet and bring your big toes together, keeping the knees wide. Clasp your hands ahead of you in Kali Mudra with the index fingers pointing. Lean the body back as far as you can without bending the hips and return. We're doing five, four, three, two, and one. From kneeling, curl those toes under. We're going to swing it back to that crouched leg hug. Place your hands down ahead of you. Step or hop it back to plank. Lower to your belly, then cobra or chaturanga up dog. To downward facing dog. Extend the right leg to three-legged dog. We're doing knee pulls down center for five, four, three, two, and one. Then we're drawing the right knee towards the left elbow right elbow, left elbow, and back. Let's do that two more times. Left, right, left. One more time. Left, right, 
left, extend, and lower the leg to down dog. Other side. It's okay if you can't touch your arms with the knee, just reach towards them. Extend the left leg to three-legged dog. Knee pulls down center for five, four, three, two, and one. Pull it in again to right elbow, left and right. Do that two more times, coming in right, left, right. Last one, right, left, right. Extend and lower it to down dog. Walk out the heels. Let's move to a strong plank and back to down dog. Plank, down dog. Keep it going, moving at your own pace, squeezing the body tight in those planks, avoiding a dip in the lower back. On this next one, stay in plank and then lower slowly and with control down to your belly. Toes pointing straight back, arms down at your sides, palms facing up. Big inhale and on an exhale, let's lift to locust pose. Lower down and press back to child's pose. You can rotate your wrists while in child's pose if it feels good. Coming forward, get into position for plank pose. Keeping the right hand down, open up to the left in side plank. You can keep the feet staggered instead of stacked here for a little more stability. Take that left hand and needle it under the body in a twist and open back up. We're doing a total of eight or you can move at your own pace doing what you can. Last one, return to plank. Left hand down, open up to side plank on the other side. Right arm needles under the body in twists eight times or moving at your own pace. Last one, return to plank. Lower the knees and send the hips back to child's pose. Again, stretching the wrists here if you want to.
Come forward now to a dolphin plank on your forearms, keeping them parallel to each other, palms flat. Raise the hips, walking the feet forward, taking the arms back to a dolphin pose. It's completely okay here if your heels don't touch down. Press firmly through the palms, raising the elbows and straightening the arms to down dog. Step your feet as wide as your mat, toes turned out. Walk your hands back and lower the hips in garland pose. option to stay here or move into crow pose. If you're unsure about crow pose, stick around to the end of the video for some tips. If you want to try it out, place your palms down with a wide grip, shoulder width apart. Take your big toes together, knees apart, hips up high. Position your legs just beneath the knees to the back of the arms, as close to your underarms as you can. Lean the body forward, gazing ahead of you as you raise the feet together or one at a time, lifting them up high towards your sit bones. Sitting back now, soles of the feet together in bound angle. Get long through the back and neck as you drive the knees down. Option to lean the body forward to deepen the stretch. Release, raising the knees together. Get long through the upper body, lifting the chest. Float the feet to a half boat pose, arms at your sides, or holding the legs for support as we hold for a few breaths here. On your next exhale, twist open to the right. To center, then to the left. Two more times on each side. Hands to your legs, lower the feet, then come all the way down onto your back, knees bent, arms at your sides, palms facing down. Lift and lower the hips in bridge pulses, moving at your own pace. On this next one, let's stay up and hold. You can get deeper into the pose if you like by bringing your shoulder blades together and clasping your hands beneath you. and lower down with control. Draw the knees in for a rest.
hold on to that right leg, extend the left and point the toes. Head up, nose to knee, squeezing the core tight. Then switch out the legs. Switching again, right leg in, left leg out, hands in Kali Mudra, twist to the right, pointing the hands to the outer edge of the right leg. Other side. To the right. And last one to the left. Lower down, hugging the knees. Extend the legs and arms out to Savasana, taking up space on our mats. Scan the body from head to toe looking for tension to be released. Relax your body as you deepen your breath. Feel free to pause the video and remain in Savasana for a little longer or take your time coming to seated. Crow pose can be a little bit scary. Let's talk about the best ways to start off with crow pose and a few modifications to ease you into it. So first thing we want to do is start in a garland pose. So that low squat with our arms to the insides of our legs. I like this position to start because it allows you to position your hands where they should be going into crow pose, about shoulder width apart. So from this squat, we're long through the back, remember, we're going to place our hands down on the mat ahead of us. Again, shoulder width apart. And don't forget about that really wide base. So when we're doing crow pose and most arm balances, these two points of contact are the only contact we have with the cramp. That's our base. We want it to be as big as possible to give us as much support as possible. So really wide hands, and then we're gonna ground down through the fingertips, just like we've talked about, just like claws, just like a crow's claws, gripping down into the mat. So we have this wide base here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our big toes together and come up onto our tiptoe. Here, and we're keeping our knees wide. Good. So now what we're going to do is lift the hips and bring our butt up high. We want those knees to be as close to our armpits as possible and what we're going to do with our shins right below the knee is we're going to bring that across the upper arm. Instead of digging our knees into the tricep, we're going to position the shin across it and give us more space there to work with and a little bit less pain if we're new to crow and we're not quite sure how to hold it yet. So lifting up, knees as close to the armpits as possible, shins are going to come across the back of the upper arm and then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to tuck that navel in and up, you're going to get really really tight through the core and we're going to round out the back just like we do in cat pose. Get wide through the shoulder blades and really really strong here. So, leaning into it, we want to make sure our gaze is between our hands or slightly forward. And then as we shift our weight forward, we can walk our tiptoes up if we feel we're a little bit too far. You can start by lifting just one leg or the other. Play around there. And then when you feel you're ready, lifting both. And then we're going to bring our big toes together and then send those feet up towards our sit bones. Good. Lots of pressure in the fingertips and in the heel of the palm. Excellent. So, 
if we find that difficult, or if we're a little bit scared that we're gonna face plant and fall forward, which many of us have, we can place a cushion, a pillow, or a blanket, or a whole bunch of pillows and cushions directly ahead of us so that we're less afraid to just fall into it. Good. If we're finding a hard time with the toes or getting those toes up, we're finding that elevation here for lack of core strength or just, you know, maybe we're new to it and we just haven't figured it out yet, you can place your toes on a block to start. So bringing us a little bit higher already, a little bit easier to just lean into it from here. Lifting one leg and the other, or both, and we're easing forward. Good. Don't forget to stay strong through the core the whole time. Another thing we might want to try is resting our forehead on a block. Maybe we want to start up here. We're not used to it yet. And giving us, this is here, is giving us a third contact point with the ground. So both hands and then the head to block gives us that third point of contact so that we feel a little bit more stable and can learn what to do with the rest of our body to hold the pose. Remember that with these more advanced poses, practice and consistency is key. Some people might get it quicker than others and that's okay. I don't want you to get discouraged. If crow pose is a goal for you, keep working at it.